When you take a course, when you register for a course, you register for a course using Banner. And then the next time that you log in, in order to see the material that your instructor has shared with you electronically, you will use Blackboard. So there's a difference between the two, and there's usually a little bit of confusion for our new students. What's the difference between Banner and Blackboard? Banner is all about your personal information, registering for a class. But once you've registered for the class, you will use Blackboard to view your course content that your instructor has provided to you, okay? And the way that you get, um, I'm going to go over some e-help first, and then we'll talk about how you log into the system. And once I see that everybody has the pamphlets, then we'll use that for the use of Blackboard, okay? But for now, if you wanted to focus your attention up here on uh, the screen, then you'll be able to learn about how to actually find this help material, okay? When you log into Lawrence Tech University's website, you have your main web addresses, www.ltu.edu. And then right after that, if you type e-help on the screen, you'll come up to this page. On this page is a central location for the help desk information. Um, other sites start logging information in here also for a central repository. And it also is a helpful material on how to use Blackboard, some of the technology that we have across our campus also. So I would suggest that this is your first starting point when you have a question about how do I do something, you want a little clarification, start here in regards to technology, okay? A um, couple of items that I wanted to point out for you on here is that um, we have one that talks about Blackboard coming up and uh, that we've switched over. So you may find in some of your classes, your professors are saying, I'm not quite sure how this works now. We, we just changed versions. We came from a previous version of eight and we've moved over so not to nine, but to you, this is just how it's going to work. So you have an advantage there that's all, all uh, fresh to you and it, that's just how it is. Um, on here is how do you log into Blackboard? That gives you information. I'm already logged in, but we'll step back out and how you log in. But this is what your screen looks like on there. What we're going to look at today, though, is Blackboard 9.1 and student information. That pamphlet that I just handed out to you, you can also get another printout if you lose it or you just want to use it online. You can click that here. The items that are listed in there also are available on the site. And this continues to be populated with more information. So begin with how do you log on to Blackboard. If you forget the address and how to get on there, you can always come back to the main page to get on there. Any questions at this point? So everybody remembers eHelp, right? If you can't find something, you're going to go to eHelp's website, and on that web page you will find resources to get to your technology, and then also you will find the telephone numbers of who to contact if you have additional questions to ask. So you always want to start with the help desk contact information, telephone number, email address, and then also if you have a question as well, how do, I don't remember how to submit an assignment or I'm having a problem with a test, you can send that also to e-learning. And we don't have 24-7, but it's pretty darn close to 24-7 uh, support for you to do that, okay? Let's take a look at Blackboard. And I'm going to log out and then log back in for you. When you type in the my.ltu.edu, this is the page that you're going to go through. What I'd like to do is use this pamphlet at this point so you can reference this material, you'll see where it's at, and then how it's used on the screens. So if you open up to the first page, this is where I'm starting here. And then I'll go over to the other pages, and then we'll flip around to the back, okay? So I'm looking at the title that's called, How Do I Log Into Blackboard? You log in with your ID that's been distributed to you from the registrar's office, and then your first login ID is going to be your birth date, which is a two-digit month, two-digit day, and two-digit year. Okay, that's the very first time. So my ID is D. Karens, and that's also the same ID that I use now for my email address. When you log in, you will see just your classes that you're registered for. So when you start off in the banner system, you're registering for classes. When you have completed your registration, the next day or later that night, you'll see Blackboard populated. And you log into Blackboard, you will see your classes listed. And they will list on this side over here. So every class that you're registered for, you will find space listed out there in Blackboard. You may not have any information populated in there because your professor may not have put any information in there yet. But if they do, it would be listed in there, okay? 
So that's how you log into the system. Once you've logged in, everybody knows, not everybody, but it's pretty much general what your uh, login information is. You want to change your password. It's very important that you do that. In order to change your password, you're going to go to personal information listed over here. Okay? So when you click on personal information, there's several items that you can update. One of them is changing your password, change it from the previous, which is the month, day, year, to the new password. So that way only you know that information. So next time you log in, it's, it's a little more secure. One of the things that you need to update also is your email address. When your professor emails you, there's a <coughs> default address that's populated in here, and it's the default Lawrence Tech University email address that's given to you, which would be for me, it's dkarens at ltu.edu. I may not want to use that as my default address to receive communications from my professor through Blackboard. I may have a separate email address that I use to collect all of my student work. So you'll want to change that. So when the professor says, well, I emailed you from uh, Blackboard, you should have received that material. Most likely this is the reason why is because you haven't updated your email address in the system. When you update it in, uh, at the level that you log in at, it populates across all of your classes. So you don't have to go into each class. You just have to go into your initial logon and change that. Okay. Um, the next item, if you s switch over to the middle page now, that we're going to look at, I, when I walked in, I saw that you had uh, information about ba Banner Web, so you know how to log in to that. So we're just going to skip down to how do I view my grades in Blackboard. Your professors may sub have you submit your assignments using Blackboard, and they may issue you grades using Blackboard. The grades that they issue to you are the grades that you receive on your paper, and then they say this is the grade, and then they log it into Blackboard. That is the grade that stays in Blackboard. At the end of the term, the professors then go over to the banner system to enter your final grade. Okay? But in Blackboard, if they're using the gradebook system there, you'll see accumulation. So one of the things you may want to ask your professors when you start your classes, do you use Blackboard? Should I receive all of my materials for this class in Blackboard? Do I submit my assignments using Blackboard? Are my grades issued using Blackboard? So it's not a given in all your classes that every professor will be using this. So double check with them on what's the best way to receive the material. Okay, that'll be important for you. One would be update your email address, and then how much does the professor expect you to interact using Blackboard and distribution of the material. Okay, so let's say, we'll assume that they are thoroughly using Blackboard, okay, and everything that you need is going to be on there. So when you go into a course, and I'm just going to select a, a test course here, I want to find out what my grade is for an assignment that I submitted, okay? And the, the next thing we'll do is look at the submission. I'm going to click on Course Tools. And again, this is all in your material here, too. So you click on Course Tools. There's many tools that you can use, but one that we're looking for right now is my grades. So you click on my grades. For every assignment that you've turned in, your professor has gone into their gradebook spreadsheet area and given you a grade for your assignment. The title of that assignment is here also. So I submitted an assignment that was uh, for what I learned this week. What material did I learn? And I received a grade on it. This one is set up as point possible. They may set it up as a letter grade also, A through uh, C. Okay. If there are any comments that they had given back to you, those would be listed on here also, typed out on there. All right. Any questions? Okay. A couple items that you'll see listed down at the end there, it says there's Grade Center Icon Legends. All of my examples for assignments have been graded. In this area here, had they not been graded, I may have, have setting in there a green exclamation point, which means it's waiting to be graded. The professor hasn't looked at it yet. Okay, so those are important for you to pay attention on that. Or they may be looking at it right now and it's in progress that they've started it. That would be a different icon that has a little pencil mark on there also. Okay, so if a professor says, uh, you know, you've turned in your assignment and it's taken a while for them to get the grade back, you can go back and look and see if it's been graded yet or not. And again, that's if they're using Blackboard for you. Um, let's move on to the third page on the end here. 
and the third section, and it's how do I use the discussion board. If you are in a class, let's say it's a um, hybrid class, and um, your professor says, this week we're online. I have set up some discussion topics for you to participate in, which simulates if you were sitting in the classroom, the professor asks you, well, what do you think about that? You know, or you, you raise your hand, I have a comment on that. When you're in an online class or a hybrid type class, and you're sitting at home and the professor has asked you while you're not in class, I want you to share your thoughts and information using discussion board. This is where you would go to do that. So you would click on the, um, the button, discussion board, and when you click that on, this format is there. The professor will have already started to a forum for you. A forum is they've opened up an area for you to share your information and they have posted some information they want you to comment on, okay? So you click on discussion board, and then you will click on the forum topic. Let me go back and pick another one. Okay, this one already has some participation in it. Okay, so it's, I see that uh, another person in, logged into this course has already made some comments on there. So if I want to make some comments on there, I would click on create thread. So I click on create thread, and I get a screen that opens that gives me some tech bo text boxes. And I would type in my comments. Get used to this new keyboard here. Okay. And then this, these are my <coughs> thoughts. You know, it'll be the same as raising your hand. What did you think about that? So you're gonna type out all of your information in there, of what you thought about that. It's the same as how many have done blogs? How many do texting back and forth? You've started a conversation. It simulates that, but one of the things you want to pay attention to is that you're following a uh, quality uh, grammar, the right format. It's not a matter of using your short, um, brief terms that you would on texting. So you want to be very thorough and business-like uh, in your communications uh, when you're typing out on here. Because it's sharing your knowledge that you've accumulated on there. You can also attach pictures in here, other documents that you want to uh, share in there. You can do your spell check on here also. You can change the font if you choose to. And then when you're all done, yeah, if it's required, you say, I have an article that I read also. I'd like to share that with you in the thoughts to further an understanding of my comments that I've placed in here. You can share a document in here also. And then you would click Submit. Now if you do Save Draft, Let's say you've read the assignment, you've typed some of the information in, you haven't quite completed all the information yet, but you want to get started, you can save the draft in there. And then when you're all done, you're, you're all your complete thoughts are in there, then you can click Submit on there. And when you've done that, your comment is now available for everybody else in the class to look at. Look at. So for example, you're all in one class. Each of you, when you log on to look at this discussion, you will see each other's comments on there. I can now comment to somebody else and say, I disagree with the comments that you've put in there. I don't see in the example how that answer could be correct. Could you tell me more uh, to help me understand how you arrived at that solution? You can ask another person that has posted in your class that information. So that, again, is if your professor has put that information out there. And so that's how you would participate in sharing in a discussion within uh, Blackboard. Any questions on that? Okay. You guys will have a ton of questions once you get in class and you actually have to do this. And who you, what, what number are you going to call or what page you're going to reach out to? E-Help. E -help. E Very good. Okay. I'll have to give you an A for this test that you have to take next, right? All right. Take a test. All right. Next item that may occur is that you have an online test that you have to take. The professor may have said, Demonstrate to me that you've read the chapter. I have a pop quiz for you online, so before you come to class, complete this quiz. How do I do that in an online environment? So on that last page, um, it tells you some examples of how to do that. I'm going to show you one in a class that I teach. <clears throat> I give the students a uh, quiz each week. And so I logged into the class, and in, what you will do is you'll go to your assignment section. Okay, You're in your class. You're going to click on the assignment button. And then wherever the location is, the title that the professor has given to you, the title of the quizzes that you need to take. So they say go to the section that says chapter quizzes and take quiz one. 
You go in and you click on the title, which is your link to the quiz. It says, are you sure you want to begin this quiz? Because if you do, click begin. If you're not sure, then cancel out of it. And most likely what you will have on here is directions that says, once you've opened this quiz test, you must complete it. It simulates if you're sitting in the classroom and the professor hands out the quiz to everybody. It would be the same as, now you can start. So once you open this, now you can start. Now what you can't do is in the classroom is like, gosh, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. Now I'm going to do it later and leave. You have to take it now. That's the same thing when you're in an online environment. Once you click begin, you must start that test. You must finish it in the time allotted. So the professor may have an hour time of allotted for you. So once you open that, you start it, and it'll tell you that the time has started on the, the quiz. It gives you some directions. And you go in and you answer the questions, OK? So I'm just going to go through it and click a few. And I'm going to uh, have it give me uh, a response if I get this right or not. So when I'm all done, I've answered all of these. I say, save my answer, OK? It says that it's saving it. Let's say I'm all done. I've completed the whole quiz. I now save and submit. Okay, you click OK. And because of the way it's set up, I can go back in and see, did I answer all of those right after I have submitted? Now, this is an option that your professor can put on there. Your professor may not choose to show you your, your responses and your grade right, right then. They may choose to go back and do that later. I have it set it up so that it shows you the responses right then. Don't assume that uh, because of the I options that I'm demonstrating to you that your professor has that set up in that class. You'll need to make sure that you ask them um, how much they will use in Blackboard, where you access your material. If they say take the test online, what are the parameters? Do I take it within a specific time frame? Okay. On the back of the page, um, it talks about submitting an assignment. <clears throat> what is an assignment? Your professor may have you submitting your papers using Blackboard. So you've completed an assignment, you write, wrote your first paper, and the professor says, submit that using Blackboard within our course. This is what you're going to follow. They may say, submit by email, but that becomes very cumbersome. You want to submit using Blackboard. Um, you may turn it in physically also, but again, double check with your professor. So you click on Assignments. Your professor will have set up an area for you to submit an assignment. I have in my class set up so that the students uh, submit their assignments using what's called Safe Assign. So one of the tools that we have in place to help you, one with checking your assignments to make sure that you have uh, documented appropriately all of your resources, we have a tool that's called Safe Assign. You may want to ask your professor to turn on some assignment submissions to help you check your paper. This is how you would do that. And if they're not sure how to do that, where are you going to send them to? E-help, OK? Because there's uh, papers in there to help them with that, setting that up. I have that set up in my class. And that's what this check mark over here indicates. So the students are going to submit their assignment online. The professor has set up the title of where to submit that at. You click on View Complete. That's how you get started. So you find your appropriate area. You click on View Complete. And I come up with a screen basically says, send some comments to your professor, dear instructor, or, you know, Dr. whoever, Dr. Smith. Um, this is my assignment. I have a total of four files. You can enter multiple files in one submission. Send them a note. Attach your papers, OK? So you would click Browse. Wherever your paper is located at, you can attach that. And you can do multiple attachments. So once you complete the first piece, they'll come back and ask you if you have more files that you would like to uh, share on there. You're all done, and you click Submit. What will happen is it will process that paper and give me back a report that shares with you the uh, resources where it found those. Because we have uh, a database that we uh, use that's global database that's with Safe Assignment that has all previous submitted papers that went through this submission all resources that we have of where you might find this information, OK? So you'll want to double check that your resources are uh, cited appropriately on there. It'll tell you how much of that paper is a straight uh, copy 
or straight text lifted from someplace else on there also. So take the opportunity to use this tool to help you with uh, verifying that your papers are uh, submitted correctly and uh, cited correctly on there. So any assignment that you have to submit that's online, you'll go to the assignment section, you'll find the appropriate area, and then you'll submit your paper using <coughs> that, okay? And attach your paper and type in your text information. Any questions on that? Okay. The, so we've covered how to submit an assignment, how to submit a safe assignment, um, how to log into Blackboard, um, how to participate in a Blackboard. If there's content that your professor has given to you, they may have some course documents out there that are listed. You can go in and click on those documents and open them up, print them out yourself, bring in your laptop and view them on there also. That concludes my session. Is there any questions at all? All right. Again, go log on to eHelp, send us an email if you have any questions. Most of this will make sense once you're in the classroom. When you start using the tool, just make sure you double check with your professor and how they use it. Okay? Thank you. Well.